quiz of the year. The show that takes 2014, throws a bucket of ice cold water over it, crashes it into a comet, and then fracks it right in the shale hole. <laughs> the big fat quiz is basically a traditional excuse for you not to talk to your family for two hours. You're welcome, Britain. <laughs> If you haven't seen the show before, then I can only assume you've spent the last ten Christmases surrounded by a loving family, playing board games whilst eating chestnuts in front of a roaring fire. Well, where are they now, eh? <laughs> As our regular viewers know, you can play along at home. So if you're new to the show, be sure to stick around right to the end when we give away one billion pounds. <laughs> Shh, don't tell me. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. Uh, first up, from the Spice Girls, it's Mel B. And my God, Mel C's let herself go. Wait, no, it's Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> a Scottish funny man and a Geordie funny woman, so press the red button now for subtitles. It's Sarah Milligan and Kevin Bridges. <laughs> And finally, one is an awkward, geeky comedian. The other's an awkward, geeky comedian with slightly different hair. It's Richard Iwadi and David Mitchell. <laughs> David, uh, Richard, I think we can all agree you're going to win tonight, so... <laughs> Shall we even well, bother doing this? that would certainly save time, yeah. <laughs> you could be runners-up, Kevin, Sarah, you yeah, happy yeah, with that? Yeah, that's OK. Yeah, I don't OK, so that. you've yeah. won, you've come second. Are you happy to come last? Do we have to be David. last? Why yeah. do you have to be last? Oh, look, if you're going to be like that, we'll do the bloody quiz, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Shall we try, then, Mel? Let's try not be we're last. We're going to try. All right, let's Me do and Mel it. have made a pact, we're going to try. Yes. Well, you, you should be fine. I think, Mel, you're going to be amazing, because we've got a music round, you'll be good on that. Mickey, I'm afraid we don't have a petty theft round, so... <laughs> There's nothing really <laughs> for you. <laughs> So, have you come up with a team name? Uh, David, Richard? Now, I thought either two nasal men... <laughs> two nasal men, OK. Yeah. Or David Mitchell's team. Yeah. <laughs> Are you confident you're going to win, Richard? I, I think he... I mean, David is like a broadsheet newspaper. I mean, he is. I mean, he is... Well, like in, in that I don't know any of the interesting news. <laughs> <laughs> I would like the team name to be Global Issues, because we want to raise awareness of global issues. If our team was called Global Issues, then people yeah. would be more aware of global issues. Than <laughs> Particularly at Christmas, I think it's important that everyone's aware of global issues. <laughs> it's an excellent, excellent team name. Let's go with that. What about uh, David Mitchell's Global Issues? <laughs> No, no, that sounds like I've got some sort of problem with my testes. <laughs> <laughs> don't cheat yourself out of an excellent campaign. Because we don't know yet about your testicles and you may yeah. need help globally. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey, Mel, what do you think you're going to go for as a team name? Because we don't get out very much. Could we be local issues? <laughs> you, you've gone right behind my back. I I've thought got... we must be on the same team. Well, you're not the first woman who said that to me. <laughs> Got issues. Yes. No. Men and, Mick, <laughs> men and Mickey's issues. No. The, bi the big issues. No. Hat <laughs> issues. No. Are you saying no? Why do we just call ourselves the Its? <laughs> that, yes, that's the obvious thing. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> sure. Uh, Sarah, Kevin, do you have do you have a team name? I um, thought of mother and son. <laughs> How old are you now? Um. 28 years old. Oh. Is that biologically possible for you to be... Uh, where mother? I'm from, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Right, let's get on with the quiz. Uh, the first round is all about the biggest news headlines of the year. In January, flooding devastated the south coast of Britain. It was terrible. I saw a woman on the news in her flooded kitchen crying. I thought, cries are helping. <laughs> In the phone hacking trial, Rebecca Brooks was found not guilty. During the trial, her husband, Charlie Brooks, said he threw a laptop computer away not to destroy evidence, but because it had lesbian porn on it and he didn't want to be humiliated. Charlie, you shagged Rebecca Brooks. That ship has sailed. <laughs> Russia sent peacekeepers to Crimea. Peacekeepers as in, see this piece of land? We are bloody keeping it. <laughs> that is how Russians talk. <laughs> 
can, I, can I just pick up on the body language in the Mickey Mel camp, which is... <laughs> I don't know what's happened, but it looks like he's gone badly over there. What's... Well, because I did like him, and I thought no, we didn't. were you team players. you never liked me. Uh, yeah, You've well, always played like me along like some broken harp. <laughs> Can I turn round then? Oh, here we go, see. <laughs> Trying just, to get round me now. Get on with it, get over it, get your balls back. <laughs> Where did you put his balls? <laughs> Cut them off a little bit. <laughs> OK, of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions. Should we kick off with the questions? Come, OK. Um, so, for our first question, it's over right. to the one and only Michael Palin. Hello, Jimmy. Now, the big news that dominated the summer was obviously the Monty Python reunion, but there was also the small matter of the Scottish referendum. After the result, David Cameron got into trouble when he was overheard discussing a phone call he'd had with the Queen. But how did he describe her reaction? So Michael Palin wants to know how the Queen reacted to a phone call from David Cameron telling her that Scotland had decided that we could, after all, take their freedom. <laughs> And she made an animal noise. I think you have to write it down. Oh, go on, you've got to write it down. Don't tell them what the answer yeah, yeah. is, for Christ's sake. It's not really a television programme, this. It's more like an exam. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so next question. This year, what was blamed on either a military coup, an addiction to Emmental cheese, or a Cuban high heel accident? Oh, I know this one. Do you want to write it down? Yeah. Rather than saying that one. <laughs> I'm really confused. Uh, you're really confused? Very confused. You used yeah. to be in the Spice Girls, you're now on X Factor. <laughs> uh, and somehow it's led you to this. <laughs> I can only apologise. So, um, why is he it. in a banana? Sorry, that's really confusing. <laughs> this quiz is a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's right. Right. You need to keep your energy up or you're going to flag in the last quarter. <laughs> Have you got Luca's aid? I've got peppermint tea and a diet cup. You're out of your I mind, used... Melby. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see your ass at the end. I'll see your ass in pieces at the end. <laughs> I'm going to be fully tanked up, whipping right till the final adverts. <laughs> A bit weird. <laughs> that yeah. has never been said to me before. <laughs> I'm, gonna... I'm not even going to finish this now. I'm going to put it back under the desk and top up in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Tactics, Melby. Tactics. <laughs> Uh, if you've seen Big Fat Quiz before, you'll know that every year the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neasden put on a rather unconventional school play. What news story are they acting out here? Look how many cars I have! You're so rich. You're under arrest! Oh, no! Very naughty. Okay, would you like some money? <laughs> you are free to go. <laughs> Pretty adorable. So, what news story were they acting out there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yeah. I've got that slow release energy, Jimmy. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Someone once told me that if you eat two bananas in a row and then run around, yeah. you die. <laughs> so, it doesn't seem likely, but I've never done it, just in case. <laughs> so, for the next question, take a look at this deliriously happy woman. What is she so excited about? Take a look. she's so deliriously happy about? That she waited so long and now it's happening. <laughs> You're going to need to be slightly more specific than that. It's a very good answer. Um, 
Did you get that, Mickey? You, yeah, anyone? I've watched it. Yeah. You watch it? Oh, yeah, it's pretty tremendous. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. Okay, last question in this round. This year, same-sex marriage was finally legalised in England, Scotland and Wales, but what phenomena did the then UKIP councillor David Sylvester blame on the new legislation? <laughs> What's happened, Mickey? You all right? He can't spell. <laughs> Jesus. He can't spell? I can spell. Yes. You did that. It's like you're a three-year-old. <laughs> Blue paradise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get some answers straight away. Okay, so uh, first up, Michael Palin asked you how David Cameron described the Queen's reaction to the Scottish referendum result. What, what did you get, Kevin? Well, Sarah wrote she pod, the Queen pod, but I don't know how you how do you pod? I can I can meow, but pur, pop. Pur. Did you say pop? No, I said she pod. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like do you mean? No, I mean, pod. <laughs> so you think she should have meowed? Well, <laughs> that would be weird for the Queen to do. <laughs> I'm impressed by her range, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Kevin, what did you make of the, the vote for, for independence? Well, it's kind of like you don't want to move out your mum and dad's house, but you want Sky in your bedroom. So... <laughs> I never knew there was as much love. Everybody was pleading for Scotland to stay. So I, I reckon we should have had an English referendum on Scottish independence first. And that would have helped people in Scotland make their minds up. Like, if you want us to stay, we're going. <laughs> and if you want us to fuck off, we're staying. <laughs> Were you pleased that Scotland stayed, Mel? Don't really care. <laughs> It would have been good, though, if they got independence, cos it's one more place we could have got duty-free. <laughs> uh, Richard and David, what did you get on this? He purred, then coughed up a hairball. <laughs> and then made a low hacking sound. <laughs> OK, so everyone gets a point on that. Fabulous. OK, I asked you, uh, what was blamed on a military coup, a cheese addiction, or a Cuban heels accident? Did anyone get this? What, what, what did you put, David and Richard? Kim Jong-un's disappearance. But then he, he reappeared again. He, I mean, he didn't disappear, yeah. like, in a flash. Like... We don't know how he disappeared, cos we weren't looking at him when he disappeared. <laughs> he was just generally around, lots of pictures of him, inspecting troops, smiling. Then suddenly he wasn't. And then he was again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Kevin, Sarah, did you know this? Can you see yeah. these answers on the screen? Oh, sorry, am I getting in the way? No, no, no. <laughs> just Can I'm... you see these answers? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a fair point Kevin makes, that you make us write it down yeah. and then you <laughs> refuse to read it out yourself. What <laughs> <laughs> an exam board in the country you say, oh, well, thanks very much for the exam papers. We're not going to mark them, but we will listen if you while ask... you read them out. <laughs> so, initially, you write it down and then a couple of minutes down. later you tell me what you've written down. But why don't we just remember it and then tell you? I don't feel I need to write those down. It's in there, man. But then it wouldn't make any sense because you just go, yeah, no, I got that. <laughs> Once I ask one of you, the other two teams to go, yeah, we got that. Oh, Alright, so it's there for the evidence. Then. That's yeah. it's evidence. Oh, oh, one evidence. thing that really annoys me is that you Ooh. can't erase it. You have to scribble over it and then rewrite over the erase thing that you can't erase. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. We've been asking on it for an eraser on this show since Thank you, since the noughties. <laughs> So, Kim Jong-un uh, yeah, disappeared for 40 days and then he, he reappeared. Probably went to a yoga retreat or something. Wasn't yeah. it, wasn't it, didn't they call it personal discomfort? Which what? is just thrush, isn't it? <laughs> oh, those are those things, you get them in Greggs, don't you? Are those they yum-yums? Like yum-yums, yeah. I didn't know there was a Greggs factory in North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you'd ever been in a Greggs, oh, David. Yeah, I... Well done. No, well, I, I was briefly researching being a normal human. <laughs> I think in fairness to David Mitchell, he was in a Gregory's. <laughs> OK, points all round on that one. Uh, OK, next up, the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School were acting out a new story from the last year. What did you get on this, Mickey? I put down um, that it was to do with the Formula One scandal. Kevin, did you get this? Yes. Yeah. Bernie Eck, I've wrote there, ECC. 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 East. 
Every am I just going to just going to happen the whole time, Jimmy? No, no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. But the, so the, I, can the, just, the, I can change my accent if you want. I can just answer like this if that's okay. <laughs> just, uh... <laughs> no, it's just a character act I put on. It just makes me. <laughs> I'm not oh. understanding now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is beyond the Eccleston. Did you get this, David and Richard? Uh, yeah, yes, he did. Yes. He looks like he should be driving a normal man from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> it must be hard to convict a man just peeping over the top. <laughs> How do you do nothing? <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> Give you some money. <laughs> I've got loads. <laughs> Standing on a box, you know. <laughs> OK, so points all round on that. Um, OK, I showed you a clip of the happiest woman ever. Why was she so excited? Is this because uh, she was probed? <laughs> she was probed? <laughs> Somebody called Rosetta. Is that about right? That's, uh, you get points for that. It's not exactly right. David and Richard, were you watching this story? This is the, the fillet lander <laughs> this that is exactly landed it. on a comet. And she was pleased that it landed on the comet, because it landed more or less as they... Well, it sort of fell over and then... Uh, into a shadow and now its batteries run out. But basically, it was <laughs> successful and she was pleased. She was over the moon, yeah. It was well over the moon, Jimmy. The moon, that was, that was years ago. <laughs> no, no, this is a comet. Yeah. The, the moon, that's 1969, I think. You know, if she wasn't over that, what sort of a loser would she be? <laughs> the probe landed on the comet. They were, it took ten years to get there and it landed, and they, the scientists went absolutely bonkers. Imagine what they're going to do if they ever see a tip. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, a professor of planetary and space science, Monica Grady, CBE, uh, celebrating the Philae lander uh, landing on Comet 67P. Everyone gets a point there? I finally asked you what phenomenon the then UKIP councillor, David Sylvester, blamed on same-sex marriage. What, what do you think? Uh, the floods. But what do you yeah, think, yeah, he said that gay marriage being allowed had caused God to go, right, that's it, you're all going to be wet for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> also, if this really was true, surely drought areas, they would just send a gay pride march through, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his garden looks lovely. If that's his garden, it looks really lovely, so if it is true, he should be grateful. <laughs> uh, David, Richard, did you, did you get this? He said the bad weather. Yeah. I mean... and, and his gout. <laughs> <laughs> we presumed he has gout. He looks like he eats a lot of game. Yeah. <laughs> For legal reasons, I have to say, um, he is a fat fella, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. As terrible well, as it was, though, you know, when you, there was a, during the floods, no matter how bad it got, there was a little part you're thinking, I'd love to be able to row down the shops. <laughs> Just, just for a little while, you're jealous, isn't you? Thinking that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I always get you annoyed with the guy. Post office. <laughs> then you get annoyed with the guy because there's always a guy on the news in a canoe going, "Oh, have you not got a canoe?" Yeah. <laughs> Where's, he off? Where's he going? Boots? It's not open, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a flood. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Is that? <laughs> I was rowing. <laughs> what, 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 I was rowing a canoe. <laughs> what you looked like was you were in a very narrow aisle on Supermarket Sweep. <laughs> so at the end of that first round, everyone's got maximum points. You've all got five. <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. This round is all about the music of the last 12 months. Kate Bush triumphantly returned to the stage after a 35-year absence. For those of you too young to remember, Bush was very big in the 70s. <laughs> Cheryl Cole changed her name to Cheryl Fernandez Vecini, finally putting her first marriage behind her. Cheryl can now get back to doing what she does best, tearfully hugging terrible singers. <laughs> 
Too harsh? Not harsh enough. <laughs> Simon Cowell became a father this year. Simon reportedly told the baby, I've been waiting all my life for you, before Cheryl added, you've got star quality, and Louis Walsh compared him to a young Ronan Keating. <laughs> Carl named the baby Eric before pairing him with another baby because he just felt they looked right together. That was nice. It was all right, wasn't it? No. Keep, keep it moving. <laughs> You've upset her now. you upset her, you upset me. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Jim. Chip shop will be shut. Time for some more questions. Uh, for our next question, it's over to Olympic heartthrob Tom Daly. Hi, Jimmy. Now, diving involves lots of weird and wonderful terminology. There are flat hand grabs, the pike, and balks, to name but a few. But what unusual phrase did Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow use to announce their separation in March this year? OK. So how did Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin describe their separation? Yeah. Is your mate? Yeah. Oh, I'm going with you. Oh. <laughs> Give it, give it yeah. So yeah. I have to write it down so you can see it. Yes. Okay. Dolly Parton drew one of the biggest crowds ever seen at Glastonbury with over a hundred thousand people seeing her performance. What I want to know is what did she play on the rhinestone studded saxophone that wowed the crowds? I guess a saxophone song. Uh, Saxophones can't sing. <laughs> oh yes they can. No, 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 they can't. <laughs> Singing is, is the verb for the, the human musical noises that have words in them. <laughs> well, OK, I'd like to formally so apologise. A saxophone song, then you must have had a talking saxophone, in which case, fucking hell, let's give up on this. There's a talking saxophone in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Um, time for our next question, and to ask it, it's only the bloody in between us. All right, Jimmy. Hello, Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy. Bumder. <laughs> uh, we had a good year this year, uh, but which singer who rose to fame this year has a first name that's the Cuban slang for clunge and a second name that's the German word for sausage? <laughs> so the in betweeners want to know whose name is clunge sausage. Uh, what does clunge? It's a term mean? for the vajayjay or the fufu. <laughs> Your, your front bum. I've never heard of that word. Have you heard Pitchy of that pocket? word? Clunge? Yes. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> it sounds like the noise that something makes when it goes in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would you say. Like a Wellington being pulled out of mud. Yeah. <laughs> I've never used the word clunge. Oh, my clunge. <laughs> Yes, numerous times. <laughs> I would never. Get out me clunge! That's a good one. Get out me clunge. <laughs> so you're just referring to that you have a clunge? No, I don't have a clunge. I have a clunge plunger. <laughs> that, is, that is the correct terminology, I believe, yes. yes. <laughs> In November, Bob Geldof released a new version of Do They Know It's Christmas to raise money for Ebola. The lyric, well, tonight, thank God, it's them instead of you, was changed. What I want to know is, what was it changed to? Today. <laughs> Aren't you meant to write the answer down, not just say no, it? No, we've got it. I'm giving you a clue. Oh, what's, what's the clue? Well, <laughs> Jimmy, this is unacceptable. This is racist. <laughs> I'm being racially abused here. You can't fall out with everyone, Mel. Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, <laughs> for the final question, it's over to our roving reporter, John Snow, who's reporting on one of the biggest songs of the year. But what is it? Over to you, John. A 20-year-old woman from Massachusetts has been diagnosed with a rare medical condition, leaving her unable to recognise high-pitched sounds. Doctors have dismissed the woman's claims that the condition is linked to her body mass index, but conceded that she does indeed have the boom-boom that all the boys chase and all the junk in the right places. <laughs> In a statement issued earlier to the skinny bitches, the victim stressed that although she was indeed bringing booty back, she wished to assure them that they too were perfect from the bottom to the top. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, Mel, you look confused. 
You've just got to write down the song he's talking about there. Well, this is your there's, area well, now. Well, there's like a few booty songs out there. Well, this is one of them. <laughs> there's lots of them. I was having trouble. Which, which of the booty songs is it, I was asking myself. <laughs> but don't, well, don't mention it. Just write down the one you think it might be. Yeah. Well, booty. How does it go? Big, big booty, yeah, I've got a big booty, work, big, big booty. Why am I even singing? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something there that would a have landed me in hard words. I was so close and I didn't feel we were comfortable <laughs> enough yet <laughs> to say. <laughs> OK, right, let's get some answers. You've got, you got something written down? Yes. Yeah. OK, all right. So Tom Daly asked you what unusual turn of phrase Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow used to describe their split. Kevin, Sarah, what, what have you put? A genital disconnection or conscious uncoupling. Or unconscious coupling, but that feels wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> Un unconscious coupling could get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah it's that's, not that then. Let's not even talk about that. I think it's conscious uncoupling, but genital disconnection's, like, more immediate. Like, just when you're just, like, just get out of my clunge, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how they should have announced it. They should have said we're... Cos it's the most pretentious thing they possibly could have said, conscious uncoupling. They should have followed it up with a... <laughs> sound effects for porn films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's a bigger one. That is an amazing clown hall. Thanks. <laughs> what, what do you get, David, Richard? Yeah, yeah, consciously uncoupling, which does sound like something a sentient train would do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mickey, Mel, did you get this? Yeah. One went vegan and the other one didn't, so they split. It's really obvious. <laughs> Can you imagine how happy the kids were, though, once they broke up? Yes, Nando's at love. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't give you a point for that, because no. it's wrong. Uh, Sarah, Kevin, you get a point. David, Richard, you get a point. So, what did Dolly Parton play on the rhinestone-studded saxophone at Glastonbury? We came up with an answer that we are equally responsible for. Yes. <laughs> Which is nine to five. <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> OK, I can tell you that is the wrong answer. Uh, Kevin, Sarah? The Benny Hill theme. <laughs> you guys, did you get this as well? It was, uh, it was Yakety Sax, best known as the theme from Benny Hill, and she played it in Glastonbury. Uh, take a look. I thought, well, I wanted to do something to impress you. So I put the stones all over this, and now let me see if I can do the rest. You ready? went absolutely wild. It's, that's testament to how powerful the drugs were at Glastonbury this year. <laughs> and they went, this is good. <laughs> so the in-between has asked you, whose name can literally be translated to clunge sausage? What, what did you write? I wrote this. Um, you... Go on. Go on. I just seem to have some <laughs> recollection of the chap with the beard in the Eurovision Song Contest saying there was some sort of play on words of his name. Uh, Kevin, Sarah, did you know this? This is Conchita Sausage. <laughs> no, and Cheetah Vost, Vost is apparently German for sausage. Eater implies small, so it means like small clunge sausage. Like a clungette. <laughs> a mini. Oh. A clungette. Mm. Very dainty. <laughs> uh, David, uh, Richard? Yeah, we'd put the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just went with truth. Yeah. <laughs> I can say the answer is Conchita Worst. David, you've got a beard. Have you ever considered growing your hair out? <laughs> well, my hair is quite long at the moment. Yeah. You should really think about getting extensions, cos it would look terrific on you. Thank you. 
I asked you what the lyric uh, in Do They Know It's Christmas was changed to. Uh, did you get this? I thought it was, uh, thank God tonight it's just the flu. <laughs> Kevin, Sarah, did you know this? It's, it's a reaching out and touching some, like a reaching out and touching you, or a re That's it. reaching out and touching your Ebola. That's <laughs> well, it, is, that. it is reaching out and touching you. Well, tonight we're reaching out and touching you, which if someone's got Ebola is a terrible it's, idea. It's literally the worst thing you can do. Yeah. It's literally the worst thing you can do. But, I mean, they're recommending it in a song, so fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> Reaching out and touching your Ebola. That's my answer. Tonight. It was more, the song was more about raising money than to be a sort of treating Ebola mnemonic. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't but like... still, they could have said reaching out and, like, touching, like, near you. <laughs> <laughs> reaching out and yeah. sort of... Tonight we're raising money. I don't know what that is. Yeah, What's we're that? We're raising money, but <laughs> physically <laughs> distancing <laughs> ourselves from you because, for fuck's sake, you've got Ebola. <laughs> It's not as catchy what you just said, though, is it? It's not as... I, I couldn't not see them all. I'll tell you what's catchy, Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you put? I've got a brand-new combine harvester. <laughs> Sorry, so can I just... just so you thought the it. lyric... You thought the lyric, uh, <laughs> well, tonight, thank God it's them instead of you, was changed to... I've got a brand-new combine harvester. <laughs> That really feels like they're rubbing it in. It's absolutely fine. You're so sensitive about these issues of taste and decency, Jimmy. It's absolutely fine. If it was about a famine campaign, yes, it would be insensitive to mention a combine harvester. Yeah. But it's a disease, it's fine. <laughs> it's just chit-chat. <laughs> I thought genuinely the lyric they replaced, thank God it's them uh, and that, instead of you. I thought it was the most honest lyric in the whole song, because that's exactly what everyone in the West thinks about the, the fucked parts of the world, global issues. We think, <laughs> you know, thank God the global issues tend to happen abroad. <laughs> Finally, you saw Jon Snow reporting on a smash hit of the year. What did you think it was? Well, I said it was the Bowie song from <coughs> J-Lo. And you agreed, didn't you? You thought yeah. it was J-Lo's... <laughs> you should know that song, don't you? I've got the album. <laughs> I've got it at the car boot, you sell. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Sarah, did you...? All about the bass. <laughs> no, the bass. All about the bass. It was called... <laughs> Megan Trainer, All About the Bass is the right answer. David, uh, did you get this? You're a big pop music guy. Um, I, I didn't uh, contribute to this answer. Um, Richard wrote this. I wrote this in collaboration with Ben Elton. <laughs> What did you write? Bass song that widens the parameters for objectification. Thank you. <laughs> Is Jon Snow actually going to release that, the way he said it there? Because I'd buy that, because he was awesome. Um, <laughs> well, if you want to see awesome, check him dance into it. Because you know I'm all about that bass. No trouble. I'm all about that bass. About that bass. No trouble. I'm all about that bass. Delicious John Snow there. <laughs> okay, let's see what that's done to the scores. Uh, I can tell you, Mickey and Mel have six points. Oh. Kevin and Sarah have ten points. Oh. David and Richard have eight. Thank you. <laughs> Quiz of the year. This round is all about the year's television. Kylie Minogue replaced Jessie J on The Voice. The Voice's USP is that the judges don't see you when you're auditioning. And then, in a weird twist, after you've won it, the public don't see you either. <laughs> Peter Capaldi became the new Doctor Who. I watched the whole series, and to be honest, it was just nice to see an old Scottish man in a phone box who wasn't urinating. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you. 
We invented the phone, so we're entitled to use the phone box for <laughs> whatever reason we see fit. <laughs> if you invent something, Jimmy, you can pass on it. <laughs> That's the rules. Look at James Dyson. <laughs> Chris Packham criticised Anton Deck for allowing the killing of creepy crawlies on I'm a Celebrity and said they were misunderstood. Of course they were misunderstood. They're both Geordies. what we watched this year. Time to go and be Sherlock Holmes. Master Monster? No. <laughs> You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. Goodbye. You can't hit me. I'm a child. You're right. But he can. Awesome. Uh -oh. Okay. Question time. First up, James Turner Street was all over the news in January this year. Why? Okay. Yeah. Don't don't say the answer, Kevin. Okay. I'm not going to say the answer. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't incentivise him, sir. I'm not spiking your butt, then. I don't want to give anybody else a benefit here. <laughs> OK. You got something, Mickey? Have you got something for this? Yes. yes. All right, aces, OK. Next question. After Top Gear were thrown out of Argentina for displaying an offensive number plate, the Argentinian police found another number plate in Clarkson's car. What did the second number plate say? So the first number plate was H982FKL, which people thought was a reference to the Falklands War in 1982. There was a second number plate found in the boot of the car. What did it say? Can I ask an audience member? Um, no. For our next question, it's over to the Queen of King's Landing, Game of Thrones star, Natalie Dormer. Hello, Jimmy. On the set of Game of Thrones, I'm used to some pretty high-end drama, but that's nothing compared to what unfolded on the great British Bake Off. This 31-year-old bearded hipster, Ian Waters, was voted off in controversial circumstances, but what did he do? That was Natalie Dormer there. If I'm honest, I didn't hear anything she said. <laughs> so Natalie wants to know what Ian Waters did to get voted off this year's Great British Bake Off. At uh, this year's Oscars, Ellen DeGeneres and Bradley Cooper took this selfie that became the most retweeted picture ever. OK? Here's the same shot from behind. So th this was while they were taking that selfie. What I want to know is who missed out on being in the photo? OK, write down your answers. Kevin Bridges, write down your answer. Yes. Do not say it out loud. OK, I will not no say clues. it. John Terry, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away! Yeah. Um, yeah. Mel? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you that... guys have made up, have you? <laughs> I knew I'd bring her over in the end. <laughs> what, what was going on, Mel? No, I didn't want to say move, <laughs> so I just leaned over to really get a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't because think we I can... know the answer. You wait and see. OK. <laughs> Posh period drama Downton Abbey returned to our screens in September, but we were all devastated when the Downton dog sadly died. What was its rather unfortunate it name? Yeah. What was the Downton dog called? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get in your head, Mel. Richard's eating another. Well, I know. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the way that you're eating it is like kind of disturbing. I think it's just because I'm very sexual. I... <laughs> Let's not go any further down this road. <laughs> I think I know where this. Okay. 
Ready for some answers? Yes. OK. Uh, I asked you why James Turner Street caused such controversy yeah. earlier in the year. What did you all think? Benefit Street, the show. It was dubbed uh, Poverty Palm. That's what they call it, no? Right, yeah, no, I think they did, yeah. Did people wank after that, then? <laughs> Benefit Street would, would be a challenging wank for... I think you could do it, Jimmy. I believe in your flower. I, I probably could. Thank you. <laughs> did you get this as well, David and Richard? Yes. Featured in Benefit Street. Benefit Street, or as we like to call it, Memory Lane. <laughs> it was, of course, that it was the location for the controversial documentary series Benefit Street. I asked you what the second number plate found in Jeremy Clarkson's car said. What did you all think? I just put down a, a random number plate. I just... <laughs> <laughs> that, is the, that is the right answer, Mickey. You nailed it. <laughs> No, it's not, it's not LX6 2CW. You're joking. Has he changed his car? <laughs> uh, David, Richard, did you...? We, we didn't know, so we wrote that, which is it was an amusing number plate that might exist, which would be B008LES, which would spell boobless nearly, oh. but you'd need another S, and we thought it could be provided by an S Sweden sticker. <laughs> Kevin, Sarah? Uh, B E 1 1 end. Which it could be perceived could be. as saying bell end. <laughs> uh, bell end is exactly the right answer. Yeah, you get a point for that. You guys don't get points. No. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next up, the beautiful Natalie Dormer asked you what Ian Waters did that got him voted off the Great British Bake Off. What have you written? I think he sort of chucked it or something all over Mary Berry. Pick. He went, have that, you bitch. <laughs> Chucked cake is... I, I think I, I may give you that. Did you get this? Um, well, I wrote, put his pudding in the bin, and Kevin changed it to pulled his pudding, cos is that a reference to masturbation, Kevin? Um, <laughs> well, it's terrible when your mum pulls you up on this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't pull him. <laughs> well, it's also good for the programme at least once to have some sexual innuendo in it. <laughs> Time, but just at one point in the two hours. <laughs> Something a little bit saucy. David, Richard. Well, we put baked Alaska bin. I think all, you all get a. Well, let's take a look. Where's my ice cream? It's here. Sorry, Ian. We, we, uh... uh... Well, that, you've got well, your own freezer, haven't freezer. you? This is all melted. <laughs> Yeah. OK, all right, so let's think about how we're going to present that. Um, that's, that's not... that's not... OK. I got a sorry right. suggestion. Oh! No, 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 go... <laughs> they could have got it back out of the bin. I'd eaten it out of the bin. Have you ever eaten anything out of a bin? I ate a croissant out of a bin once. But I... I told my friend and she went, ooh, croissant! <laughs> <laughs> So who didn't quite make it into the Oscar selfie? What, what did you think, Mickey Mel? Elton. <laughs> Elton's at every party, isn't he? It, it was a long shot. We just thought he would have turned you, up. You thought that that was Elton at the back there? <laughs> Liza Minnelli. Well, you know, you know how you've got to write down the right answer. <laughs> oh. uh, Kevin, uh -huh. Sarah, what's your answer? Uh, we wrote down Liza Minnelli. <laughs> well, you didn't. You, you wrote down Liza My Nelly. <laughs> in it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, Richard, did you get this? We, we, we kind of uh, thought of short people <laughs> and we thought, gosh, that would be amusing, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> these short people are hard to see when there are larger objects in front of them. <laughs> it's just um, constantly amusing to me. And um, two short people we thought of were Bernie Eccleston, which was also a kind of back reference. <laughs> And, and then um, we put Liza Minnelli. We just thought ah, well, Liza Minnelli, I'm going to give you a point. Uh, you both get points for that. That's Liza Minnelli. Let's take a look. So, yeah, there, there she is. And finally, I asked you, what was the name of the dearly departed Downton Dog? What, what did you put? We, we knew this one. Isis Dog. Yes, Isis. I would have accepted Islamic State or ISIL. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Sarah? Uh, Al. The dog's name is Al. Al-Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> No, and then we put ISIS. David, Richard, did you get this? We put ISIS. 
OK, so points all round on that one. OK, now it's time for a special bonus round about films. I'm going to show you pictures from three of the biggest movies of the year which have been subtly improved. All I want you to do is tell me what are the films. So here's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that is the sex tape that me and Sarah made, which is... <laughs> which I look is... so disgusted in the picture. <laughs> I'll show you the second one. <laughs> so, um, David and I had summer jobs. So what film is that from? <laughs> Third one? <laughs> yeah. It's good that I don't look too happy about that. Hours in makeup. <laughs> I'd have my hair done special. Mm, maybe, yeah. Okay, have you all got three answers? Maybe. Yeah. Right. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, so the first one? Interstellar. There's no one green in Interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> my TV's going, that's what it is. <laughs> what, what do you think the second one was? Pink Panther. <laughs> What was, the, what was the third Ish. one? We, we decided that was the Wicked Witch. <laughs> Some of you may not have seen, it's just come out last night. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, what did you get? Um, well, the first one's got Galaxy in the name, but I can't remember, but it's got a dancing tree. Uh, the second one is, the, I think it's the Grand Budapest Hotel. And then the third one is all pornography. <laughs> Uh, David, Richard, you, you, you seem to have nailed this one. What have you got? Guardians of the Galaxy. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, here's how it should have looked. Yeah. Grand cool. Budapest Hotel. Grand Budapest Hotel. <laughs> Fair enough. Maleficent. And Maleficent. That was it. Well, we just said. <laughs> but it was there. It was there. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, Mickey, that's not the answer, mate. Okay. Well, let's have a look and see what that turns up the scores. Mickey and Mel have nine points. David and Richard have 15. Out in the lead, it's Kevin and Sarah with 17 points. <laughs> To the big fat quiz of the year. This round is all about the internet. The Queen's first ever tweet was about the Science Museum. The next 90 were pictures of the corgis looking cute, a selfie of a stamp, and attempts to troll Fergie. <laughs> An American man live tweeted that he'd been trapped in a Waterstones after staff accidentally locked him in. Must have been so boring. I've no idea how he kept himself occupied. I just hope he had YouTube on his phone. <laughs> For the younger viewers, a Waterstones is like a really big Kindle that you can walk around. <laughs> Robbie Williams videoed himself singing various songs to his wife during her labour. And if you're wondering what he opened with, I think it was some forceps. <laughs> it's all right. OK, you ready for some big fat questions? Yeah. Of course yep. you are. OK. Take a look at this clip of Bono. What I want to know is, what is he apologising for? Oops. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, I had this beautiful idea. Mona got carried away with herself. Um, artists are prone to that kind of thing. Drop of megalomania. Um, touch of generosity. Dash of self-promotion. <laughs> and <laughs> deep fear. Are you all right there, Mickey? <laughs> You know, it's like a knobhead lessons, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like... Say sorry, mate. <laughs> OK. For our next question, it's over to the one and only Lily Allen. Hello, Jimmy. Now, I have dealt with my fair share of online haters, but nothing compared to poor old Dong Wen, who withdrew from public life after he was accused of creating something almost as addictive as crack and distracting the children of the world. But what was it that he had created? Okay, so what did Dong Wen create? This was meth, I'm fit. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> almost as addictive as crack. It was, it was not meth and fetamine, I can tell you that. Okay, so what did Dong Wen create? Crowdfunding website Kickstarter continued to finance projects of budding entrepreneurs, but what unassuming project raised an unexpected $55,000 this year? Angry Bird. Aww. What's that other one? <laughs> 
uh, Sarah has thought of something <laughs> filthy, it would appear. <laughs> just sat there, Kevin. It's what he's for. It's all a good way. It sounds really good. Mm. Yeah, it's what he's for. <laughs> It's all he's bloody good for, <laughs> laughing at him. Fair enough, that is his job. OK. This is Japanese politician Ryutaru Nonomura being questioned about his expenses in a press conference. His reaction to the questioning went viral. What was so unusual about it? <laughs> yeah. Um, are you planning to take over the world? <laughs> That laugh suggests that you're maybe planning to do something evil. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, what internet fad did Charlie Sheen do with $10,000, Matt Damon do with toilet water, and Patrick Stewart replace with a glass of whiskey? So, what did Charlie Sheen do with $10,000, Matt Damon do with toilet water, and Patrick Stewart replace with a glass of whiskey? Okay, have you, have you got the answers, Kevin? Sarah, you got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Richard, David, you got answers? Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, you saw a clip of Bono apologising. What was he apologising for? Because they basically put their album onto everybody's iPhone for free. That's what I... Because I, I woke up in the morning and I just thought, man, I'm not going in today. <laughs> I just saved myself £7.20. <laughs> what, did you think it was a good idea, Mel? I thought it was a great idea. Yeah, I didn't think you were allowed to put shit through people's letterboxes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kevin, Sarah, do you get this? Yeah. Forced. Underlined the word forced as well. Forced have you, his album. Have honestly. you written, hi, Jimmy, and then yeah. drawn a dick? <laughs> well, they're separate. No, they're separate, man. Hi, what Jimmy. Paranoid, just, just hi, Jimmy. What the hell? There happens to be a dick there as well. <laughs> uh, David and Richard, do you get this? I mean, what he says would apply to a new aftershave. <laughs> and the dash of whatever it was, self-importance, a bit of... A flavour of self-promotion, <laughs> little little scent of guff, you know. <laughs> His new aftershave. He must have an aftershave. Yeah. <laughs> He's got dog food, hasn't he? Bono has not got dog food. <laughs> that's polio, <laughs> and you know that's polio. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the free download of his album is the right answer. Apple uploaded YouTube's album to everyone's iTunes account, whether they wanted it or not. Next question. Lily Allen asked you what Dong Wen created that distracted the children of the world. What do you think? Well, we, know, we went a bit old school. I think we might be a bit out of whack. But, well, because uh... I was saying Bejeweled. It's something like Bejeweled. And then you said that new version is Angry Birds. No, I... I... Zzz, no, you I said bird. Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird? Yeah, and Angry Bird is quite old, isn't it? I don't know, because I don't... Don't say the Angry things. Bird is quite old, Mickey. <laughs> 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 I think I'm tempted to give you a point there because yeah, you knew I would. it. I you would. knew it, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew it. You said flappy birds. Yeah. I, I, I knew it was knew. a bird doing something. Okay, what did you get, David and Richard? For this one, yeah. I had no idea for well, we this, one. this one. But, but you got flappy chicken. <laughs> well, I will give you that on the same basis that they got angry bird, you got flappy chicken. Okay. It's flappy bird. Oh, right. Yeah. What did you get, Kevin? Game, something, birds. When it was something, birds, and it was a game. OK, you can all have a point with that. Uh, Don Wen was the creator of Flappy Bird. He took the game off sale because he said, I don't need the attention. I don't yeah. need the hassle. I'm he didn't want this game. the attention. Yeah. And yet we bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> very point, he wants everyone to stop talking about it. <laughs> Who compared it to crack in terms of how addictive it is? Um, surely you'd need somebody who's tried crack and played this game. <laughs> um, so can you imagine, if it's genuinely more addictive than crack, that people who are addicted to crack forget to take crack <laughs> because they're so keen to play this game? <laughs> that would be brilliant. So I'd go, oh, my God, come down and need crack for two days. <laughs> <laughs> this, this guy has invented a cure for crack addiction and now he's taking it off the market. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mr. <laughs> Flappy Bird. <laughs> OK. Uh, next up, I asked you what unassuming project raised over $55,000 on Kickstarter. What did you all think? Well, I didn't like this one. OK. We, we didn't have a clue, so Mel kept saying she wants a glass of wine, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to ask. <laughs> Can Mel have a wine? <laughs> yeah. So what did you get, David, Richard? Uh, it's already crossed out on the thing, so, I mean... <laughs> Oh, 
I don't know, you read it out. I mean, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm depressed, <laughs> we're completely demoralised. <laughs> So you put a, a foot pedal operated cake bin? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Kevin, Sarah, what did you get? Uh, potato salad. That's the right answer. How much did he raise? He raised $55,000 for a potato salad. Uh, he used the money to hold a festival called Potato Stock 2014 with <laughs> bands, food and potato salad, of course, to raise money for charity in the end. He thought he'd do something good with it. <laughs> All right. So you saw, you saw a picture of a Japanese politician uh, Ryutaro Nonomura being asked questions about his expenses. What was unusual about his reaction to the questioning? Yeah, he was getting really upset and crying, from what yeah. I remember. He, he it was quite something. Yeah, he was crying, but as I remember, he was, it looked like he was really trying to cry. It was, and he'd done something that was obviously wrong, and he was trying to seem upset about it so people might take pity on him. I think he genuinely looked upset, but, I mean, well, you can judge for yourselves in a second. Did you get this, Kevin, Sarah? Um... He either cries or he gets his cock out, because either would be unusual. <laughs> you want it unusual, that's unusual. I normally do them both at the same time. <laughs> I have a very specific order I work in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I, well, let's have a look, shall we? Let's treat ourselves. <laughs> You know what would have been really funny, Jim, if at the end that desk just fell in half? <laughs> <laughs> OK, um... All right, so uh, I think you all got that. Yeah, you all got that. Well done. Um, OK, I asked you what did Matt Damon do with toilet water, Patrick Stewart do with a glass of whiskey, and Charlie Sheen do with $10,000. What do you have? The ice bucket thing. And yeah. I did that. Did you do that? It's freezing, yeah. Um, Kevin, Sarah, what did you do? Uh, we've got ice bucket challenge. Lovely. Uh, David, Richard? We also put ice, ice bucket challenge. Should we have a look at the greatest ever ice bucket challenge? Oh, Take a look. say this evening will be as funny as that. <laughs> so it's the part of the show where I introduce a mystery guest. All you have to do is guess who they are and how they made the news this year. You can only ask yes or no questions. So ladies and gentlemen, my mystery guest! <laughs> say too much. Uh, they, they, you can ask you questions, yes or no questions only, and he will reveal so afterwards a, how a, a he Yes or no news. questions, yes and no, or, or questions to which the answer is yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I ask, did you win Eurovision? No. <laughs> oh. Is the thing that happened to you or you did, a thing about which you are pleased? Yes. Did you create something very unique? No. Was it a protest sort of thing? You're sort of on the right lines there. What, not deliberate, but yeah. What do you mean, not deliberate? Well, that's exactly <laughs> what I mean. I'm not giving you any more clues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an, an accidental <laughs> protest. <laughs> yes. Did you get stuck in water stones? <laughs> no. No, that could have been a protest against books. <laughs> Did you get um, sort of arrested for something? Yes. Are you a criminal? No. <laughs> Did this thing happen in Britain? Yes. Did it involve someone quite high ranking? Yes. Okay, yeah. I think you've asked okay. enough questions. Oh, I, I think it. you need to write yeah. down yeah. what oh, you think it yeah. might be. I know that's gay. Yeah. Are you a keen jogger? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever met the Prime Minister? And <laughs> 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 you are the worst yeah. of this game. <laughs> 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 C A M. <laughs> oh, you're such a shit. <laughs> Next time, can I have get somebody oh. else's team, please? <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see what everyone wrote. Okay, so um, Mickey and Mel, you've got 
He did. He done Cameron, didn't he? Done Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> done him. Straight in, boss. Get over there, yes. you posh bastard. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, what did you get? Uh, attempted to kill the Prime Minister. <laughs> Attempted to kill with sport. Uh, David, Richard, what did you get? Jogged into David Cameron, the Prime Minister of here. <laughs> should, should, we, should we take a look at you in action? Yeah. <coughs> oh. Well, we've got that on camera. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, yeah. so tell us what happened. What, well, who are you and what happened? Well, my name's Dean Farley and I ran into the Prime Minister. Yeah. Round of applause, well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, so what is, what happened? Well, I was running on my way to the gym. I tried to run around this bunch of men in suits. Right. And then into? Into the Prime Minister and then into the back of the police van. <laughs> so, did, what kind, of, what kind of contact did you make? I mean, did you properly... Went over. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Right, that's probably about us. Oh, oh, well, so nothing really. Nothing. Was he quite firm? No. The <laughs> <laughs> security guards are though. And then presumably they just went, oh, just a misunderstanding, just a bloke out for a jog, not a problem. No. <laughs> oh shit. What, what happened? I got taken down by the security team, cuffed. Right. And then thrown in a van for an hour. <laughs> You, they didn't talk to you when they you were in They just put you in they the van. They just put me in the van. And what were they doing then? Having lunch. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, okay, well, let's take a look and see what that's done to the score. So, uh, Mickey Flanagan and Mel have 14 points. They're in last place. Uh, David and Richard have 19 points. Uh, Kevin and Sarah are in the lead at the moment with 23 points. <laughs> time now to take another break for one more time. Dean Farley. <laughs> well done, sir. Good work. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. This part is all about the sporting events of the last 12 months. Earlier this year, Kevin Peterson was banished from the England cricket team. If you're not sure how cricket works, it's a bit like football, except when you get caught out, it's not with six hookers in a travel lodge. <laughs> The Queen's Gold Cup winning horse tested positive for morphine. On a serious note, if you're a horse and someone offers you drugs, just say nay. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton sealed his second Formula One World Championship with victory in Abu Dhabi. Or to explain it to Richard and David, a man went very fast in a car. <laughs> Sport. <laughs> Right, more questions for everyone, OK? All about sport. OK, my first question, it could not be more simple. Take a look at this photograph. What just happened? I mean, seriously, can we just opt out of this round? <laughs> <laughs> look at us. You'll be fine. You'll get this one. This, is so, this could not be easier. He actually know. knows the answer. Yeah. OK, everyone got something on this? You got this, Mel? Oh, yeah. We, we have got this. You're nailing this. OK, cool. Yeah. Um, next up, it's over to footballing legend Rio Ferdinand. Now, 2014 has been an unbelievable year for sport, setting Twitter alight. One particular sporting moment got an amazing 35 million tweets, making it the most tweeted about sporting event ever. But what was it? OK, so Rio Ferdinand wants to know, what was the most tweeted about sporting event ever? Badminton. <laughs> I could give you a clue. Everyone can get a clue. It's not badminton. Well, I'm out. <laughs> Which badminton isn't? The game badminton or the horse trials badminton? It's... I can, I can tell you, it's not the racket sport badminton. OK. okay. <laughs> Take a look at this clip of a farmer, Keith Chapman. Uh, why is he doing this to his sheep? Play the right clip. <laughs> he says, oh, he says, uh, you don't fancy colouring sheep for me, dear. I says, uh, yeah, I says, uh, I'll shear them and then get some dye and dye them for you. Anyway, we've got this dye that we use for... Uh, up in time, it's you know, marking it and I mixed it with water and uh, put it on. It was just like having a bath, really. <laughs> yeah. So that was Keith Chapman. Why did he do that to his sheep? <laughs> okay, and finally, Glasgow hosted the Commonwealth Games this year. One of the most memorable moments took place when the Queen attended the Australia versus Malaysia hockey match. What did she do that made global headlines? The, the Commonwealth Games were on. <laughs> Yes. How often does that happen? <laughs> 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 
the Commonwealth Games are on. They were in, they were in uh, Glasgow. What did the Queen do that made global headlines? OK, have you all got something? Well, let's get some answers. I showed you this picture. What had just no, happened? Yeah. There was an incident where uh, Suarez bit this chap on the shoulder. Do you know who he bit? Uh, yes, one of the other players. <laughs> <laughs> OK, not too much detail. Uh, <laughs> Kevin? Uh, Italian defender Giorgio Chiellini. Yeah, Giorgio Chiellini, uh, the Italian footballer, was bitten by Luis Suarez. Well, actually, Suarez explained that, that he actually lost his balance and he fell and his mouth was open and his teeth went and hit off Chiellini's shoulder. That's why he's holding his two front teeth. <laughs> That's the, like, a fell on the hoover, isn't it? <laughs> uh, did you get this, David Richard? I don't know who any of these people are. I thought I had a vague <laughs> sense that there was some kind of uh, cannibalism incident in the World Cup, and I wondered whether this was a picture referred to it. But I, I didn't realise it was a shoulder, I thought it was an ear. Um, you're thinking, I think, of Mike Tyson about 15 years ago. <laughs> That's the last um, sporting incident I heard of. <laughs> oh, I just heard Mike Tyson bit someone's ear, and I thought, oh, that's a bit rough for boxing. <laughs> no points for you, I'm afraid. Uh, Rio Ferdinand asked you what became the most tweeted about sporting event in history. I presume, Mel, did you get this? World Cup in Brazil. I think. Well, what was the specific event? When Germany were winning 7-1. Well, Kevin, Sarah? Uh, Kevin's written Brazil getting humped. 7-1 <laughs> in the World Cup semi-final in Brazil. There's a lot of information there, almost like it's like a two-pointer, that one, isn't it? Uh, uh, David and Richard, you've written exactly the same thing again. <laughs> that looks like a computer glitch where we've just reprinted the answer. No. We're going to write someone bit in the ear for every answer from now on. <laughs> Is it? OK, fine. I showed you a clipper farmer, Keith Chapman. Why had he done that to his sheep? Well, I, w I didn't really have a clue. Now you sort of explain this. Well, I think up north, there's, like, rumours that go round about, well, what happens to sheep. Right. That get looked after by their sheep looker after her. And, I think uh, shepherd is the term that we're, <laughs> that we're using in English. And I think they were just made to look sexier. It's a very good answer. I mean, it is the sports round, and that was really a clue. Uh, Kevin, Sarah, what did you put? Does it make them taste better? <laughs> like, what do you kill them for eating? Does it make, like, cos they Is it, like, a flavour rather than a colouring? Uh, David, Richard, presumably you didn't get this, did you? I think we rather did, actually. Oh, yeah. God, what did you put? Thanks for the preconceptions about us. <laughs> uh, we put, because of the Tour de France. Uh, that's the right answer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> As you can see there, he decorated his sheep so that they match the colours of the shirts in the Tour de France. Um, so, uh, fantastic. You get a, po a point to David and Richard on sport. Come on. I mean, slightly patronising if we're honest, but still nice. OK, uh, yeah. four. Uh, what did the Queen do at the Australia versus Malaysia women's hockey match <laughs> that made global headlines? I thought the thing that really made everyone shocked was that she did a day's work. <laughs> no, but it was uh, she walked into a um, photo that some people were taking, which is just absolutely made unbelievable. <laughs> uh, just, you... It blew me away, really. But, yeah. <laughs> the Queen to be in a photo. Oh, you've never seen... <laughs> unbelievable. What's happening in this country? <laughs> Um, uh, Kevin, uh, what have you Fort written? Photo bomb. bomb. I got the correct answer. David, Richard, did you get this? He put, she ended up in the back of some hockey player's selfie. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Queen. There she is. <laughs> so you all get a point for that. Well done, everyone. And now it's time for two very special guests, the first ever gold medal winners at the Winter Paralympics, Kelly Gallagher and Charlotte Evans. <laughs> You've done a curtsy! Just that's my favourite thing that's ever happened. Um, <laughs> uh, how, well, first of all, uh, gold medal winners at the uh, Paralympics. Go, what's about Talk me through how your sport works. So basically, we communicate through headsets in our helmets, and I can communicate to Kelly, and Kelly can communicate to me. At a, uh, what kind of speed? That's 75, 80 miles per hour. Okay, it's quite, quite fast to be skiing downhill, mm. and you're visually impaired? Yeah. 
But so, you know, how, what attracted you to this sport? I love it. Like, I can't drive a car safely, definitely, um, or ride a horse, or cycle a bike, or just generally running. I'm a bit clumsy. So having Charlotte in front of me and that sense of freedom and being able to just ski all over the mountain and it's those high speeds is just incredible. I love it. It wow. sounds really cheesy, doesn't it? Like, it doesn't sound cheesy at all. Yeah, it sounds no, really. it sounds like the most exciting thing that could possibly happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you've got a question. What's your question? Our, um, our event, the Super G, is one of the many outdoor events at the Winter Games. But we would like to ask you, name three indoor events that was covered in the Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. Okay, so point for each, you've got to name indoor events at the Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games. Coddling. No. No, no, don't, 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 Kevin, <laughs> you are literally the worst of this. <laughs> Everyone else is able to write things down. Kevin. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to write coddling down, and then I'm going yeah. to... Any I other think that's the wrong answer, then, anyway. Have you got any other <laughs> thoughts of what it could be? No, uh, you don't get to know. <laughs> so, hang on, while they're writing things down, um, have you had any accidents while you've been... Yeah, I skied into a rope and I pulled my face apart to here. And you did sort of, what? Yeah. You skied into a rope and pulled your face apart to... Yeah, like that. And then these are, like, all came out. I thought I'd lost all my teeth. And so I was just screaming about how I used to have beautiful teeth and there was loads of blood everywhere. And I had her searching through the snow for my teeth. Searching then... through the snow for she your teeth? She didn't lose that her teeth. That is a disaster. <laughs> I was searching for these teeth that were in her mouth. <laughs> and then everyone kept on going, like, it's fine, it's fine. And then they take, the, like, the, the gauze away and they go, oh. And then... <laughs> It was wow. horrible. It was, it was really bad. Are you going to go to the next Olympics? Yeah. Okay, all right. Love it. Bloody mum. Well, you better win again, because I'll put money on it this time. Um, OK. <laughs> all right, so what have you got? What have you got, everyone? Mickey, Mel? Mel wanted to put down horse racing. No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> no, curling we thought would be one. Curling? I wonder what, I wonder where you got that idea from. And then we had ice hockey. Ice hockey is, yeah. I, I thought of that. And, uh, then, and then you've also written... And then I thought of basketball. Well done. And well swimming. Done. <laughs> but they could use uh, maybe a snowball and make it more wintry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, two out of three is not bad. Uh, yeah. Kevin, Sarah? Well, you've got curling as well. I don't know where we got that from. I just went mental here, Jim. I just forgot indoor sports and I've just put pool darts. <laughs> what else did you write? Um, arm wrestling and bare bum boxing. <laughs> you have to be indoor, because otherwise you just get traps. <laughs> And then, what else have you written? Uh, playing the fruit machine. <laughs> you are the most Glaswegian man that's ever been. <laughs> you consider playing the fruit machine a sport. What? How can you play it outdoors? Where are you going to plug yeah. it in for a start? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, David, Richard, what, do, what got, did you get? We've just got the lot. Um, snow football, tundra squash... <laughs> ice badminton, speed skating... Is that a thing? Speed that... skating is... I mean, yeah. that's right. We, we're bigger Finger skating, skating, and we put curling. Well, you've got three. Yeah. Right, so you've got about curling, wheelchair curling, speed skating, figure skating, ice hockey, ice sledge hockey. Let's have a look and see what that's done to the scores. So, uh, Mickey and Mel have 19 points. Uh, David and Richard aren't far ahead with 24. Uh, Kevin and Sarah in the lead with 27. <laughs> OK, time for a quick break, but once again, please give it up for gold medal winners, Kelly Gallagher and Charles Evans. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. This round is all about the famous faces that define the year. In January... Former BNP leader Nick Griffin was declared bankrupt, so that socially, morally and now financially, he's got the full set. <laughs> the Oscar Pistorius trial dominated the news. The prison Pistorius is now in is notorious for violence, AIDS and murder. Mind you, it is in South Africa, so it still gets three stars on TripAdvisor. <laughs> Vladimir Putin's actions in Ukraine caused controversy. The only way Putin could be less popular now in the West is if he banged the John Lewis penguin on the steps of the Kremlin. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at some questions. First up, it's time to say what you see. Have a look at your screens. What news story are these pictures spelling out? Kevin Bridges, shush. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. You, yeah, you write it down, yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I would have thought a pattern was emerging now, Sarah, but okay. <laughs> Let's just put. <laughs> Don't fucking stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
OK. <laughs> For our next question, it's over to Pop Princess Pixie Lot. Hi, Jimmy. Now, I've been fortunate enough to walk a few red carpets this year, and it's important to look good. But at the Berlin Film Festival in February, Shia LaBeouf decided to walk the red carpet with a paper bag on his head. But what had he written on his bag? What did Shia LaBeouf have written on the paper bag he wore on his head at the Berlin Film Festival? That is what Pixie Lot wants to know. She's dying to know. She sat at home now thinking, when are they going to bloody tell me? <laughs> OK, um, this summer everyone was talking about the lavish wedding of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. The dress code for guests was black tie. But what did Will Smith's son, Jaden Smith, decide to wear instead? <laughs> I can just tell, I can tell from the, that, just the rocking of her shoulders there, you said something filthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're 100% if you're honest, Mel, are you slightly falling for Mickey? And it's OK to say you are. I think he's a lovely guy. I think he's got a little bit shocked tonight. I don't think you, you were yourself tonight. I don't think you were having as much fun as you should have been. Do you think he chose the wrong song? <laughs> Mel, can I just say, I am ready to give the next round. 100 per cent. Thank you. I don't feel like I've been myself tonight. I know, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, but please, please give me one more chance and okay. I promise I'll come through for you. If you want to hear a tragic backstory, okay. yeah. Mickey, let loose. I've got one wooden buttock. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, for our next question, it's over to one of Britain's finest character actors, Mr. Charles Dance. He's reading an extract from one of the biggest selling autobiographies of the year. Who is the mystery author? Over to you, Charles. Chapter One. I went to church dressed as Rudolph once. I don't know why. Reindeers are funny, aren't they? I used to get them confused with dolphins. I couldn't remember which it was that Father Christmas drove around in the sky. <laughs> And I didn't know what the nativity was until someone told me the other day. I thought it was an activity. I also thought Jesus' mum was called Jesus until Helen Flanagan told me it was Mary. I don't understand much about Easter either. Apparently it's got nothing to do with eggs, chickens or bunnies. I know it's to do with Jesus, but I thought the eggs came about because he was born in hay and the yucca eggs in hay. So whose autobiography was he reading from? Uh, I can give you a clue, it's not Charles Dance's own. <laughs> All right. Ed Miliband earned the lowest approval ratings for a Labour leader in years. In May, he was ridiculed in the papers after he was photographed eating what? <laughs> Mickey? I'm not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> uh, there he is. <laughs> OK, ready for some answers? Yeah. OK, so I showed you a say what you see. What did you see? David Richard, talk us through. Someone bit an ear. <laughs> <laughs> Not the right answer. Um, Mickey, Mel? Uh, I just saw a guy, I didn't... Rec I, I, is he a singer? Is he a basketball player? <laughs> um, that's Saul Campbell. He's quite a famous man. Right. I didn't recognise him in that picture. So you didn't know, uh, you didn't know. Uh, Kevin, Sarah, what do you put? Who worked it out? Go on. Um, Saul Campbell, Angie Watts, Solange. Solange. Uh, that was that, really? Nick Knowles. Yeah. Uh, Beat up. They're J's, and that's an E. So, so Solange Knowles beat up Jay-Z. Round of applause, I think that's the right answer. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Pixie Lot asked you what was written on Shia LaBeouf's paper hat. I am not famous. Uh, well, that's, that's close enough, you get that. Uh, what, what did you put, Mickey Mel? Not famous now. Again, I'd say close enough. What did you get, Kevin and Sarah? Uh, we've got, I'm no longer famous, or if found, please return to. I thought he might have just had a big M on, he might have just been to McDonald's. There was that as well. <laughs> no, well why, you... why did they say that? I am no longer famous. 
I don't, I don't get why that... I think he was, he was having... Well, people said he was having a breakdown. I think he just didn't want to be a celebrity anymore on the red carpet. There was a song written about him this year. Did you see this? It, was, it went viral on the internet. It's by Rob Cantor. Do you want to have a look? Yeah. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. You limp into the dark woods, blood oozing from your stump leg. You've beaten Shia LaBeouf. Wait, he isn't dead. Shy surprise, there's a gun to your head. And death in his eyes, but you can do jujitsu. Body slam, superstar Shia LaBeouf. Legendary fight with Shia LaBeouf. No more Tuesday night for Shia LaBeouf. You try to swing an axe at Shia LaBeouf. But blood is getting fast from your stump leg. He's dodging every swipe. He parries to the left. You cut him to the right. You catch him in the neck. You're chopping off his head now. His head topples to the floor, expressionless. You fall to your knees and catch your breath. You're finally safe from Shia LaBeouf. to ask, who, who's Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, I asked you what Jaden Smith opted to wear instead of black tie at Kim and Kanye's wedding. We, we couldn't. We just put kilt because that... <laughs> no, no, you put That's what kilt. crazy people wear at weddings, don't um, they? go, let's wear a kilt. Woo I think markedly more crazy than that. Kevin and Sarah? You put a Millwall shirt. <laughs> Um, a Sergio Tashini track. So he's a young kid, isn't he? That's what kids well. Well, yeah, kids around your way, yeah. I think. <laughs> Is that a he, point then? He, no, it's not a point. Uh, David, Richard. We I mean, put cricket whites or a Batman outfit. <laughs> You've nailed it both. <laughs> he wore an all-white Batman outfit. <laughs> you see, how would you two know that if you don't even know who Shia LaBeouf is? You're assuming that David Mitchell and Richard Arwadi weren't at the wedding of the summer. Oh, they weren't? They... No, I mean, that is a fair assumption. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so whose autobiography was Charles Dance reading from? Joey Essex. Oh, yeah. really? Because yes. we put Joey Essex as well. Uh, and so did we. Well, yeah. everyone got so... points for Joey Essex. <laughs> I asked you what Ed Miliband was photographed eating. What, what did you put? We believe it was a sandwich. sandwich. What was in the sandwich? Bacon. Mayonnaise. With, with mayonnaise, yeah. Which caused all the problems. Because it dripped down his face. All went down and down. Okay, Kevin, Sarah, did you get this? Yeah, we put a bacon. They get fed up writing, just put a bacon. Yeah, we just stuffed. <laughs> just down tools. What else can it be? A bacon? You know yeah. the next word's going to be sandwich. <laughs> Richard, um, what well, did you put? Well, we have <laughs> elected to write both the words bacon and the word sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Well, la di da. <laughs> there he is eating a, <laughs> eating a bacon sandwich. Um, I mean, I mean, in fairness, it's not a great photo, but also, nice. what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so it was it was a bacon sandwich. Uh, points all round. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look and see how everyone's doing at this stage. So, Mickey and Mel have 22 points. David and Richard have 28 points. Kevin and Sarah are in the lead with 31. Welcome back to the final part of the Big Fat Quiz. This round's all about the talking points and water cooler moments that define the year. The first e-cigarette advert was shown on television. If there are any children watching, I'd just like to remind you, smoking e-cigarettes is not cool. You should smoke real ones, then the popular kids will like you. <laughs> Renee Zellweger made headlines with her new look. It certainly raised some eyebrows and got rid of some wrinkles. <laughs> If you're watching, Renee, don't let the accusations get to you. You just have to take it on where your chin used to be. 
revenge porn was made illegal this year. Of course, I'd never resort to using revenge porn on an ex. I think having slept with me is punishment enough. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Thank you very much. There was a ring of truth there, I feel. <laughs> Let's have a look at some questions. In October, American artist Paul McCarthy landed himself in hot water after erecting a Christmas tree sculpture in Paris. What I want to know is, what was unusual about the sculpture? <laughs> <laughs> have you got the right answer, Mickey? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's weird, but it's true. Uh, this is a picture of 18-year-old Australian Jack Cooksey, who became one of the first people in the world to buy a brand-new iPhone 6. What I want to know is, what was the first thing he did with it? <laughs> oh, yeah. What you do with your iPhone, mate? <laughs> <laughs> you bloody larrigan. You drongo. <laughs> if you're watching in Australia, I'm trying to do your accent. <laughs> if you're watching in New Zealand, I'm accidentally doing your accent. <laughs> OK. Um, what craze of 2014 saw people learning how to do the fishtail, the dragon scale, and the inverted hexafish? <laughs> Sorry, David Mitchell thinks he's having a breakdown. <laughs> I, I'm hysterical. I'm just being amused by unusual syllables. <laughs> what craze of 2014... <laughs> So all people learn how to do the fish tail, the dragon scale, and the inverted hexafish. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what the answer is? <sighs> no. <laughs> it's not pop related, is it? It's not pop related. No. So we are allowed to ask questions to kind of figure yes, out. Yes. I'm answer. sorry. Did I not mention that at the start? No. <laughs> right. Okay. For our next question, it's over to Rock God's status quo. Hi, Jimmy. Hello, everyone. Now, as you know, we've rocked all over the world, so our knowledge of global affairs is absolutely first class. Now, in September, domestic security in China was at its highest due to pro-democracy protests. But what bizarre security measures did officials take to ensure their national holiday celebrations went off without a hitch? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're the funniest people on the show. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. They look incredible. They do look incredible, yeah. They look a little bit like, and I, lo I absolutely love status quo, and that's why they're there, but they look a little bit like Waldorf and Statler from The Muppet oh, Show now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and final question, a big fat quiz, 2014. It's a say what you see, what news story yeah. are the pictures spelling out? Oh, Kevin, don't say anything out loud. You're a very naughty boy. I've not said a word to Sarah's speaking at a much higher volume than me. I'm... She is a Geordie, she can't help that. <laughs> it's lilting and sing-songy. Thanks. If you don't get this, though, then but, but, you need to take a long, oh, hard no, look at no. yourself. In, in, uh, Listen, everybody, that's the sound that everybody... No, I'm up, jump, up, back, jump in. There's no murmuring out there. <laughs> no murmuring. <laughs> OK. Mickey, Mel, Ryan, answer, and then we're, and then we're done with this. We can I move on with our lives. Mm. We don't have lives. That's why we're here. <laughs> You ready for some answers? It's, yeah. What was unusual about the Christmas tree sculpture that artist Paul McCarthy erected in Paris? What, what did you all write? It resembled a dildo or a yeah. butt plug, a sex toy of some description. Uh, what did you go for? <laughs> yeah, well, we heard that it was, looked like a dildo. And David, Richard? <laughs> we heard that it looked like, or was perceived to look like, a sex toy. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to give points all round. No, because he didn't say dildo. Don't uh, well, give them the point. Well, hang on. I, you were the ones I was not going to give the point to. Because it looked like a butt plug, but I would say a butt plug is a subset of dildo. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. <laughs> that does... <laughs> that does look a bit like a butt plug. I mean, let's face facts. Whose butt is that going to plug? It's fucking massive. <laughs> I asked you what was the first thing Jack Cooksey did with his brand new iPhone 6. What did you put? Well, we went old school on this one. Called Mum. You think he called his mum? That's oh, what they mom. tend to do, young people, don't they? Got yeah. Got it, They're it, always mom. calling their mum. I've mom. got it. I've got it, mum. You fuck off, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> What's the chase here, you little <laughs> slag? <laughs> oh, what, a, what a lovely insight into Mickey's family life. <laughs> Chase. How would you invite him round over for dinner? <laughs> Not now. That kind of language. Jesus. Yes. Glue <laughs> <laughs> it. Again. By the last minute, Mickey, you were in there. <laughs> I 
What's the story about that? <laughs> oh, uh, Kevin, Sarah. I think he either dropped it and smashed it accidentally, or he bent. I know he, it broke in some way. But... Okay, well you, you you sort of got it, David Richard. He dropped it. Uh, let's have a look. What's your name? Jack. Hi, Jack. How are yeah, you? I'm How good. come you got the first one, Jack? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's actually open it. Okay, now this is just the normal iPhone, is it? This is just the normal iPhone 6. Yeah, I didn't want okay. a bigger one. Okay, all right. We're What's doing a reveal. Name? His name's Jack. Oh! <laughs> How is he ever going to come back from that? Oh. <laughs> What cry saw people learning how to do the fish tail, the dragon scale, and the inverted hexafish? What have you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you gone for, David? Uh, UKIP. Because <laughs> we thought, it, wouldn't it be lovely if it was just a bit of a weird craze? <laughs> okay, uh, what, what do you think, Kevin, Sarah? Uh, well, I thought there might be new sex acts that I wasn't aware of. The inverted hexafish. Yeah, it feels raunchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, or loom bands. Loom bands. Uh, well, what did you make? Uh, uh, I, no, I, I just wrecked my brains for the last big craze that I, I remembered, and it was clackers. Remember clackers? <laughs> uh, so, what have you been Wait, I, I used to call them knockers because I was a very funny little boy. And, uh, <laughs> but then I sort of I remembered they were actually called clackers. Okay. And they really took off, but the kids were hurting themselves and they pulled it from the market. You, could, you had to go underground to get clackers <laughs> for uh, a number of years. There was a bloke down Brick Lane still sold them, but you had to go up to him and go, any clackers about? <laughs> <laughs> and every now and then you'd hear the clicking of clackers and you'd think, he's about. <laughs> the clacker man's about. <laughs> that's the last craze I could think of, Jim. OK. Knockers, clackers. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that's not the right answer. The right answer is loom bands. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Huge craze. So, I, a status quo asked you what bizarre security precaution Chinese authorities undertook. What, what did you put? They made everyone promise to be good. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, Jimmy. Yeah, what, I, what have I you got, Mickey? This story. They, uh, they had to get... They were worried... I don't know what they worried about the pigeons were going to drop. Pigeons and their bombs. But they, they were examining the pigeons' rectums bombs. for... Uh, Bombs. I want to put it like that. Like security things round pigeons' necks, not up their rectums. They've been looking up uh, their bums. Mel, Mel, it's were... the right answer. <laughs> we got the right answer? Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck me. <laughs> Don't tell me that I'm wrong, that I'm really, really wrong. Don't tell me that I'm wrong, that I'm really, really wrong. <laughs> Needs a cigar. Um, you didn't really um, say that. I did just say that. No, yeah. you didn't say that. No, I did just no, say that. No, you fucking did not just say that. <laughs> Jamie, you need to tell her, don't go wasting your precious time. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely. I genuinely think, though, Mel and Mickey have been getting on all night, but I think now is the moment when two become one. <laughs> I said to right at the top of the show, I said, it, you know, if you want to be my lover, you've got to get with my friend. <laughs> Jimmy, you've given her everything. I was giving her everything, you yeah. You've given her everything. <laughs> All that your joy can bring. <laughs> I just, we were just commenting that, you know, you, you, you didn't like those references, and I just, you know, we were just trying to spice up your life. Yeah. <laughs> what are trying to do? I'm sorry, sorry, Kevin, sorry, Kevin. 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 Sorry, Kevin. Kevin. Lyrics, the future, but... forget the past. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right now! Oh, fuck's sake. All the... <laughs> 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 I'll give you that. I genuinely got a pain in my stomach from laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what did you get for this one, Kevin, Sarah? I was unsure of the plural of anus, so I've put anuses and anus eye, just to be... Wait, the misses, you know. Oh. The part of my oh, I, think anus the, I think the anus eye is right in the middle of the anus. <laughs> and the final question of the Big Fat Quiz. Um, I asked you to say what you saw. What, what did you see? 
I was so pleased with myself when I got this. I'm going to pull off when I get in. <laughs> Justin <laughs> B. Bear. Just I helped you with this, yeah, by go the on. way. Boo eggs at neighbour's house. I told you this fucking... Justin Bieber, answer. eggs, neighbour's house. OK, what did you get, Sarah? Did you get the exact same Justin as that? Justin Bieber egged at neighbour's house and the neighbour was clearly Hugh Laurie. But... <laughs> eggs, egged. Egged? Is that, that's a verb, isn't it? No, eggs. Eggs. I think it's, I think it's a bit slangy. <laughs> I, think I think you've let the show down. <laughs> To now, it's been all classy. <laughs> well, that is your light. It's time to tot up your scores at home. There are a possible 41 points on offer this evening. I don't know how you did at home. Here's how our teams did. Um, so, in last place, Mickey and Mel. But Whatever. Yeah, you've made lifelong friends. That's the important thing. <laughs> When I turn up on X Factor in about 20 years' time, I expect a bit of leniency. <laughs> OK. Uh, in, in second place, David Mitchell and Richard R. Whitey with 31. <laughs> but the winners of the Big Fat Quiz 2014, Kevin Bridges and Sarah Milligan. Yay. Here is your trophy. Thanks to all our amazing panel, our special guests, and thanks to every one of you for watching at home. Don't forget to tune in for the Big Fat Anniversary Quiz with Russell Brand, Noel Fielding, Jonathan Ross, Warwick Davis, Jack Whitehall and Claudia Winkleman, where we celebrate ten years of big fat fun. I'm Jimmy Carr. This has been the Big Fat Quiz of 2014. Good night!